Yes, friends. Now let us uh, focus on our uh, another part of section 17, which deals with your uh, proportionate IDC, proportionate credit. So, friends, what you have to understand? You have to understand that there is something which is happening which is not allowing you to take the entire credit. Now, what is that situation you have to understand? When you get full credit, when you get no credit and when you get proportionate credit is the entire thing that you have to understand here. If at all, if at all, you are talking about a scenario, if at all you are talking about a scenario where the goods or services are partly used for business purposes and partly used for other purposes, then there comes the concept of proportionate ITC. Or if you are talking about the goods or services are partly used for taxable supplies, uh, which along with it will include always zero rated supplies. Why? Because zero rated supplies, though you don't pay output tax, you can get the credit. See, what is the normal understanding? You pay output tax, get the entire credit. You don't pay output tax, no credit. But for zero rated supply, even if you don't pay output tax, you get entire credit. So there are certain goods and services which are used for taxable supplies, including zero rated supplies. Also, they are partly used for exempt supplies. In that scenario, again, you talk about proportionate ITC, taxable as well as exempt. So when you talk about certain goods or services used for business as well as personal purposes, proportionate ITC. When you talk about certain goods or services which are partly used for taxable supplies and partly for exempt supplies, proportionate credit. Friends, when you talk about certain goods or services uh, which are used only and only for business purposes and only and only for taxable supplies, you get full credit. So, you have to understand that how to segregate it. Now, let us segregate the things and let us understand that how you are going to get the credit. If goods or services are exclusively used for business purposes and exclusively used for taxable supplies get full credit if goods or services are used for only personal purposes no credit if goods or services are used only and only for exempt supplies no credit so till here things are very simple so fully used for business and taxable supplies full credit exclusively used for only personal purposes no credit exclusively used only for exempt supplies no credit so when that proportionate credit comes only for certain goods or services which are used both for business and personal purposes proportionate credit or certain goods and services which are used for both taxable and exempt supplies proportionate credit and credit will be restricted only to that business portion or that taxable portion now how to find out that for that you have a rule called as rule 42 rule 42 and rule 43 are the two rules which talks about calculating proportionate idc Rule 42 talks about calculating proportionate IDC for inputs and input services. Whereas Rule 43 talks about uh, proportionate IDC for capital goods. Friends, that uh, inputs and input services which are used for both personal and business use as well as for taxable and exempt supplies, we call it as common inputs and common input services. The same is true for capital goods as well. So the focus is on common inputs and common input services. Now how to analyze that? We will make it quite simple. Supposing your entire credit your entire credit is t which is equal to 10 lakhs total credit is equal to 10 lakhs out of which few inputs and input services friends the focus is only on inputs and input services in rule 42 few inputs and input services are used exclusively for exempt supplies exclusively this is total credit exclusively for exempt supplies t1 say it is a 1 lakh Few inputs and input services are used exclusively for non-business purposes, say 50,000, right. Few inputs and input services are used exclusively, are covered under section 17, subsection 5, that is block credit, that is block credit, let us say it is another 50,000, right. So when you talk about the total credit, you have to categorize that into two, first and second category. The first category will talk about exclusively for exempt supply, you don't get the credit, exclusively for uh, personal purposes, you don't get any credit, block credit, section 75, you don't get credit. So all these three cases, all these three cases, you don't get, get any credit, you don't get any credit. The balance credit, the balance credit is called as common credit, we will call it as C1, common credit. Now what is common credit? 10 lakhs minus, your 10 lakhs minus this entire thing which is say 2 lakhs because 2 lakhs you don't get credit so your common credit is 8 lakhs your common credit is 8 lakhs so for this common credit friends you will get the amount in your electronic credit ledger 
So when you talk about uh, uh, this T1, T2, T3, which is exclusively for exam supply, exclusively for personal use, exclusively covered under section 17.5, block credit. You don't get the credit, it will not hit electronic credit ledger. But this 8 lakhs will go and sit in your electronic credit ledger. But wait, friends, this 8 lakhs does not contain entire credit. This says 8 lakhs has two portion. Now you have to segregate this 8 lakhs. 8 lakh has to be further divided into two parts. What is the part one? Part one, friends, you are talking about a scenario where where you will get entire credit, where you will get entire credit. Say, let us assume that that part one is 5 lakhs exclusively for business purposes and taxable supply. Exclusively for business purposes and taxable supply. This was say exclusively for exempt supply or this was for personal purposes and this is a blocked credit. Now you are talking about exclusively for business purposes and used for taxable supplies which include zero rated supply 5 lakhs. You should get full credit and you have got full credit. So this particular category, this particular category, you should not have got the credit and you have not got the credit. 1 lakh plus 50,000 plus 50,000, you should not get the credit, you have not got the credit. 8 lakhs contains both full credit as well as proportionate credit. So this you should have got full credit and you have got full credit. This portion was no credit portion and you have not got credit. 2 lakhs is no credit portion, you should not get credit and you have not got credit. 5 lakhs represents full credit, you should have got full credit and you have already availed full credit. Now balance, balance 3 lakhs, 8 lakhs minus 5 lakhs. This balance 3 lakhs represents actually common inputs and common input services. This actually represents common inputs and common input services. You should have got only proportionate credit but you have already got full credit. So this 8 lakhs is divided into two parts. This 8 lakhs now is divided into two parts where you are talking about 5 lakhs full credit. You should have got full credit. You have got full credit in electronic credit ledger. 3 lakhs you should not have got full credit but you have already got full credit. But you have already got full credit which means that now you have to do some reversal. Now you have to do some reversal. Now that reversal, that reversal is D1 and D2. That reversal is your D1 and D2. D1 reversal is in relation to exempt supply. D2 reversal is in relation to your personal, personal use, personal purposes. This D2 will not come every time. D2 will come only if the question is specifically asking. So that you have to remember. D1 will all come always. D2 will come only if the question is having such data. Now what is the D1 reversal? D1 reversal is equal to 3 lakhs, which is uh, because this 3 lakhs you should not have get, got entire credit, but you have got entire credit. So now you are going to reverse something. 3 lakh multiplied by turnover of exempt supplies divided by adjusted total turnover. D2 is equal to 3 lakhs multiplied by 5 percentage. Right. These two amount you have to reverse it. So these two cases, these two cases you are going to, you are going to, now you have to just take the data and work it out. So you will see the turnover exam supplies and you will see the total turnover. So D1 is equal to 3 lakhs multiplied by value of exam supplies divided by adjusted total turnover. D2 is equal to 3 lakhs multiplied by 5 percentage. Important point is D2 will not come always. It will come only if the question is specific about it. Right. Now this will be, this will be reversed from your ITC which means that it will get reduced from your electronic credit ledger. So initially you have got 8 lakhs in your electronic credit ledger. Initially you have got 8 lakhs in your electronic credit ledger which is 5 lakhs you should have got full, you have got full. 3 lakhs you should not have got full but you have got full. Out of which now you are going to reverse something from that 3 lakhs. 3 lakhs should not, you should not have got full but you have got full. So you are going to reverse something. One reversal is D1 which will come always. D2 will come only if the question is asking. D1 is in relation to reversal in relation to exempt supplies. D2 is in reversal is in relation to personal purposes. So D1 will come always. Reversal of ITC will be there. Right. That is the entire working which will be done. This will be done month on month basis. Friends, this is all about your, this is everything about your common, common inputs and input services as per your rule 40, 42. And this is done month on month basis. Now wait, we are almost done with this uh, rule 42, but that's one thing that you have to understand. What is that thing that you have to understand? 
year end reconciliation you should do you should work out the same thing year end as well d1 and d2 reversal you should work out which means that month on month reversal will be doing d1 d2 d1 d2 d2 will not come always only if the question is asking uh, giving the data that there are certain in goods and inputs and input services which are used both for business and personal is only then d2 will come otherwise d2 will not come only d1 will be there so year end reconciliation you are required to do now friends what are you going to do in year end reconciliation same formula that you have applied month on month you will be applying year wise and again finding d1 and d2 reversal for now not for month but for the whole financial year which means supposing assume that month on month reversal which you have done say month on month reversal you have done 50000 uh, 60000 uh, say 35000 etc etc month on month reversal you have done for 12 months this month on month reversal comes to say 5 lakhs this is monthly calculation year end check tells that the reversal should have been reversal should have been 6 lakhs now in that case what you have to do what you have to do in a case where you have already done reversal of 5 lakhs but year end check tells that you should have done reversal of 6 lakhs you should reverse one more lakh you should reverse one more lakh that extra one lakh will, should, will be paid along with interest from 1st of april of the succeed, succeeding financial year till the date of payment so in this scenario in this scenario what will happen is you are going to reverse itc of one more lakh along with interest at 18 percentage not right from the beginning it will be from 1st of april of next financial year till the date of payment this is one scenario another scenario assume year and reversal comes uh, to be uh, 4 lakh 50 thousand same some uh, year and d1 and d2 comes to be 4 lakh 50 thousand first you have to calculate month wise d1 d2 to find the total of the same then you have to check year and figure which will be only one figure if it is more than what you have reversed do the extra reversal along with interest at 18 percentage right from first april of next financial year till the date of payment if it is less than what you have reversed which means you should have done reversal of 4 lakh 50 thousand you should have done reversal of 4 lakh 50 thousand but you have already done reversal of 5 lakhs you have already done reversal of 5 lakhs month on month now what you are required to do re-avail credit re-avail the itc re-avail the credit whatever extra reversal you have done you re-avail the itc but but within the due date what is that due date that that, that they are trying to talk they are telling that that extra excess reversal re-avail the credit in before the month of september of next financial year the time limit for re-availing that credit is september of next financial year so that is all about this that is all about this rule 42 year end check right this normally doesn't comes in your exam question they will stop at monthly reversal but year end check will be there that's everything about your rule 42 now friends let us focus on your rule 43 now rule 43 what it is trying to tell rule 43 tells that now we are talking about reversal of uh, uh, credit on common capital goods reversal of credit on common capital goods the best way to understand your best way to understand your rule 43 is taking this example right so we'll make sure that you understand uh, rule 43 entirely with the help of this example right we'll make it things very 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 simple now let us focus on this example step by step you'll understand the entire rule 43 our revision of rule 43 will be totally over now during april 2020 tata limited purchases the following capital goods a capital goods a value is 10 lakh gst is 50000 capital goods b value uh, value is 20 lakh gst is 1 lakh we are focusing on gst capital goods uh, c capital goods c uh, value is uh, 30 lakhs uh, gst is 1 lakh 50000 now capital goods a was exclusively used for exempt supply b was exclusively used for taxable supplies and c is uh, used both for taxable supplies and exempt supplies taxable supplies and exempt supplies now friends you have to understand that just like we have worked for inputs and input services have that understanding but there will be small change here and there what are the changes we'll discuss now capital goods a you can take full credit capital goods a you can take full credit and you're going to you're going to take full credit full credit you can take so capital goods a 50,000 you are going to take entire credit 
rather sorry capital goods say you cannot take an credit because it is exclusively used for exam supply beg your pardon it was exclusively used for exam supply you cannot take no credit category because it is exclusively used for exam supply no credit so it will not be credited to your electronic credit ledger capital goods b you can take full credit because it was exclusively used for taxable supply 1 lakh entirely will be credited to your, to your electronic credit ledger full amount even capital goods c though it is a common capital goods where we are focusing on rule for rule 43 is only for capital goods c though capital goods c you should not take entire credit but initially you'll get the entire credit full amount full amount you'll get initially you'll get the full amount see there's no problem with capital goods a and b a you cannot take credit you're not taking the credit b you can take full credit you're taking the full credit capital goods c you can actually take only partial credit but you take entire credit so initially you take an entire credit now what are you going to do you're going to reverse it now this reversal is a small difference between reversal that you do in your uh, 42 and here here the reversal will be again the basis will be 1 lakh 50 thousand the basis will be 1 lakh 50 thousand so first you have to take this 1 lakh 50 thousand divided by 60 that the 60 will not come that it is the common credit multiplied by taxable exempt turnover divided by total turnover here it is common credit multiplied by exempt turnover divided by total turnover but there is one more thing multiplied by 1 divided by 60 so first you have to take that divided by 60 you have to calculate monthly reversal monthly reversal that will happen monthly reversal will be 1 lakh 50 thousand divided by 60 because you are going to do that reversal for capital goods c not only in that month but all for next 59 months also this month and next 59 months so monthly reversal will be this 1 lakh 50 divided by 60 then step 3 now this reversal is not the exact reversal that you are required to do because it is the basis is divided by 60 this will be common figure for the reversal 1 lakh 50 divided by 60 which is 2500 this is the common basis for reversal during the this month and next 59 months but reversal will not be 2500 reversal will be 2500 multiplied by exempt turnover divided by total turnover in this case exempt turnover was given as 1 crore and total turnover is 1 crore plus 2 crores that is 3 crores so you are going to do reversal actual reversal that will happen is 2500 multiplied by 1 crore divided by 3 crores that is te that you are going to to reverse tm is the monthly basis that you are going to use tm t is the actual reversal that you will do 2500 the basis multiplied by exempt turnover to total turnover now you may ask what are the differences that you have in 42 and 43 the first difference is in capital goods rule 43 you have this 1 divided by 60 1 lakh 50 multiplied by 1 divided by 60 which is not there in inputs and inputs services second difference is in capital goods you don't have year and check which is there in inputs and input services input and input services you have a year and check in capital goods there is no year and check because you are going to do reversal not only for this month but also for the next 59 months third when you talk about 42 42 that is how when you talk about capital goods you don't actually call it as reversal of idc you call it as addition to output tax liability so when you talk about rule 43 there are three differences major differences that you can easily identify point number 1 Here you have one divided by sixty, which is an extra element, right? What is that extra element? One divided by sixty, which is not there for your inputs and input services. And when you talk about your second difference in capital goods, you don't have a year and check that you have for your inputs and input services. Third, in for your rule forty three capital goods, you call it as addition to output tax liability. You don't call it as reversal of ITC. You call it as addition to output tax liability. whereas in 42 and 40 rule 42 that is inputs and input services you call it as reversal of itc right these are the three important differences that you easily find it out in your calculation portion so that it is easy for you to recollect now if i were to explain in a very simple manner i would have taken this example and completed it i mean this generally happens uh, in a very normal situation but wait let us continue the example now something happened in may In May 2020, you are talking about May month. Tata Limited purchased the following capital goods. What are the following capital goods? You are talking about say capital goods D, GST two lakhs exclusively used for taxable supply, which means that you will get entire credit. Capital goods E, capital goods E, which is GST is two lakh fifty thousand common, which is used both for taxable supply and exempt supply. But wait, there is another point also. From May 2020. Capital goods B will be used both for taxable supply and exempt supply. Capital goods B, which was earlier used only for taxable supplies, 
now it will be used both for taxable and exempt supplies that's a that's a special point here now let us analyze what happens in may so first focus will be only on d and e then we'll focus on b first focus will be only on d and e now what will happen with d and e so when you talk about d d capital goods d 2 lakhs exclusively used for taxable supplies no issues why full amount will be credited to electronic credit ledger it is covered under now full category and you will get full credit why it is used only and only for taxable supplies capital goods e capital goods uh, e 2 lakh 50 thousand now that capital goods is used for both taxable as well as exempt supplies so it is covered by common category you should get only proportionate credit but for the time being you will enjoy entire credit for the time being you will enjoy entire credit next you are talking about that conversion now what is happening specialist that's the capital goods B, which was initially used for, for only taxable supplies. Now it is used for both taxable and exempt supplies. Initially, capital goods B was used only and only for taxable supplies. Now it is used both for taxable and exempt supplies, which means that from full category, it is coming under common category, right? So 1 lakh, are you going to take credit again in the month of May? No. Why? Simple reason for capital goods B, entire 1 lakh credit you have already enjoyed in the month of April. Now it is already credited, therefore, nothing will happen in credit ledger. So, capital goods B, 1 lakh credit portion you have already taken, you have already taken in the month of April, therefore, nothing will happen in the month of May. Nothing will happen. Reversal will be coming, but nothing will happen in credit ledger. Right. Now, what is the total common credit TC? What is the total? What is common credit? Common capital goods credit. What is the total common capital goods credit? The total common capital goods credit. Now, what are, what are all the capital goods which are now common? Which are now used for both taxable and exempt purposes. One is capital goods C, April month. One is capital goods uh, E. Other is capital goods B, which was earlier for taxable, but now for both taxable and exempt. So, capital goods C's credit is... So, you have to add 3 capital goods C, capital goods E, capital goods B. Capital goods C credit is 1,50,000 if you can see the April month working. Capital goods E credit is 2,50,000 given in May month. Capital goods B credit is 1 lakh. Though you don't take the credit again in May, but the credit, common credit will include even 1 lakh. So, total is 5 lakhs. Right. So, TC credit of common capital goods. Uh, not only purchase in current month but also of previous month including even conversion happening in current month so it is capital goods c plus e plus b b is very special because now it has been converted from taxable to uh, uh, it was earlier used only for taxable now used for both uh, taxable as well as exempt which means that full category to common category it is there so it is totally five lakhs now tm what is the base for monthly reversal now tc is total credit of common capital goods tm is monthly credit which is now 5 lakhs divided by 60, which is 8,333 if you use your calculator. But this is not a reversal. You are not going to re reverse this amount. Right? Because it is only monthly, not divided by 60. But what is the actual reversal? 8,333 TE. 8,333 multiplied by exam turnover divided by total turnover. So, in this May month, what was the exam turnover? 50 lakhs. What was the total turnover? Exam plus a taxable 50 lakhs plus 3 crores, 3.5 crores. Now, that will be added to output tax liability of May month. That will be added to output tax liability of May month. Because for rule 43, you don't call it as reversal of ITC. You call it as addition to output tax liability. Right. Next, friends, uh, they will continue the example. That's one more category that you have to understand. Right. We have seen fully used for taxable, fully used for exempt, used both for taxable and exempt. We have also seen conversion from uh, taxable to taxable and exempt now you have to see one more category conversion from exempt to taxable and exempt so that is the last thing that you have to see now you're talking about the month of june in the month of june tata limited purchased the following capital goods capital goods f gst 3 lakhs exclusively used for taxable supplies next you're talking about capital goods uh, g 3 lakh 50 thousand exclusively used for exempt supply wait one more special point is given during June 20 capital goods A which was you <coughs> <coughs> excuse me which was earlier used only and only for exempt supplies 
now will be used for both taxable supplies and exempt supply so this you are talking about this point friends you are talking about exempt to taxable plus exempt exempt to taxable plus exempt in the previous point capital goods b was covered by uh, taxable to taxable plus exempt now it is exempt to taxable plus exempt reverse scenario so one special thing will be there about capital goods a now wait this is something that you have to understand because it has a special working it is not like the previous uh, month june may now june will have certain special things step number one what will happen capital goods f no worries entire three lakhs will be credited to electronic credit ledger capital goods is f is used only for taxable supply it should get full credit and it will be fully credited to electronic credit ledger capital goods g three lakh fifty thousand you should not get any credit and you will not going to get any credit because it is only used for exempt supply you should not get credit and you are not going to get any credit but wait there is something special about capital goods a capital goods a earlier was used only for exempt supplies where you did not get any credit so if you go back to the month of april and if you see capital goods a you did not get any credit now suddenly it is used for both taxable and exempt supplies so first thing that you have to understand that will be a special working what will be that special working first thing that you have to understand on capital goods a you will get the entire credit so entire 50000 entire 50000 you will get the credit but wait getting entire credit is also not fully right because uh, when you get the entire credit you have to understand that at least for two months it was used for only exempt supplies so there will be a reversal as well what is that reversal five fifty thousand multiplied by five percentage multiplied by one quarter so this will be again addition to output tax liability this formula is actually itc multiplied by five percentage multiplied by number of calendar quarters now here number of calendar quarters is april may june so it is only one calendar quarter so what will happen for capital goods say is two things simultaneously first you will get entire fifty thousand as uh, added to your credit ledger in the same month, you have to add something to your output tax liability for capital goods A. We are not even entered into common category. We are just discussing about capital goods A. First, get entire credit, 50,000, because you have not got earlier. Now, you should not get entire credit because for some time it was used only for exam supply. So, you have to add something to your output tax liability, which is the, the ITC, which is 50,000, multiplied by 5 percentage per quarter or part thereof. Quarter is always calendar quarter. In this example, it was used only for April, May, June. So, it is only one quarter. This will be added to your output tax liability. Now, friends, what are the common capital goods? <coughs> what are the common capital goods? Now, if you look at the entire question, common capital goods were capital goods C in April, capital goods E in May, capital goods B, which was converted from taxable to common, and capital goods A, which was converted from exempt to common. So, there are totally four common capital goods. There are total, totally four common capital goods. C plus E, which were right from the beginning used for both taxable and exempt supplies. B, A, earlier they were used uh, for taxable supply, later on they became common or earlier they was used for exempt supply, later on became, they became common. So, total common capital goods is 1,50,000 on capital goods C, 2,50,000 on capital goods E, 1,00,000 on capital goods B, 50,000 on capital goods A, 5,50,000. So, that is TC. These are the four common capital goods, total credit on those four common capital goods, right? And T T M the monthly proportion monthly proportion of those common capital goods is five lakh fifty divided by sixty, which is nine thousand one sixty seven, right? But this is not the reversal. Actual addition to output tax liabilities T E, which is equal to T M T M plus T M multiplied by exempt turnover divided by total turnover. So this monthly basis nine thousand one sixty seven multiplied by what is the exempt turnover fifty lakhs? What is the total turnover of fifty lakhs plus two crores? So, multiplied by 50 lakhs divided by 2.5 CR. This will be added to addition, output tax liability in June. Now, in June, there will be two output tax liabilities. One will be in relation to capital goods A, added to output tax liability 2500. Another will be in relation to all the common capital goods, which is uh, 1834, which will also be added to output tax liability. So, this will be special. So, in the month of June, Two things will be added to output tax liability. One for normal case, common capital goods, which is uh, TE. Other is uh, only in relation to capital goods A, where initially you get the entire credit 50,000, then you have to add it to output tax liability. So there are two addition to output tax liabilities in the month of 
june so this friends you have to understand so this is all about your all about your common common inputs input services and common capital goods common inputs input services is there under your uh, rule 42 common capital goods is there under your rule 43 now certain special points here <coughs> general meaning now certain special points you have to understand that what is uh, exempt uh, turnover what is total uh, adjusted total turnover so when you talk about exempt turnover e aggregate value of exempt supplies and uh, f which is nothing but your uh, total turnover adjusted total turnover in state now when you talk about adjusted total turnover in state it is very similar to your it is very similar to your uh, uh, aggregate turnover the only difference is whenever it is all about calculation please remember that calculation is always based on state turnover and when you talk about the concept it is based on ag aggregate turnover that is pan india turnover so this is about calculation it is based on state turnover right so what is the meaning of state turnover the same thing as aggregate turnover only difference is aggregate turnover is pan india and state turnover so for that particular state or union territory so it means all taxable supplies and exempt supplies including exports and interstate supplies uh, uh, it excludes what it excludes inward supplies because turnover is all about outward supplies it excludes inward supplies subject to rcm it also excludes gst taxes it also excludes gst taxes this is very similar to your aggregate turnover exactly equal to aggregate turnover the only difference is there is no pan india concept here it is state wise but small difference here here this turnover in state and union territory for the purpose of rule 42 and 43 will also exclude will also exclude your excise uh, vat and cst so specific is exclusion which is only in relation to 42 43 definition of turnover in state or union territory is exactly equal to your aggregate turnover what is that it will ex include ex taxable supply, exempt supply, zero rate of supply, interstate supply, intrastate supply, everything. It will exclude two things. Inward supply subject to RCM because it is focusing on outward supply. And it will also exclude your GST taxes. Now, what is special about 42-43 calculation? When you take 43-43 calculation, then you have to make one more change in turnover in state on unit entry. You have to remove even central excise duty, state excise duty, VAT and CST. So, that is only specifically, only and only specifically for 42 43 not for other purposes now what is meant by value of exempt supplies general meaning what is meant by value of exempt supplies value of exempt supplies generally means nil rated supplies normal meaning of exempt supplies nil rated 100 percent exempted non-taxable that is the normal meaning of value of exempt supplies as per section 2 clause 47 nil rated 100 percent exempted and it includes non-taxable supply now specifically for the purpose of 42 and 43 specifically for the purpose of rule 42 and 43 there are certain specific inclusions only for the purpose of 42 43 and specific exclusions only for the purpose of 42 43 what are the specific inclusions what is meant by specific inclusions right now exempt supply will include something only for the purpose of 42 43 exempt supply will exclude value of exempt supply will include something for 42 43 value of exempt supply will exclude something only for the purpose of 42 43 what it will include it will include supplies where recipient is liable to pay under rcm you are talking about not inward supply you are talking about outward supply first focus on turnover always focuses on outward supply you are not paying tax but your customer will pay tax under rcm obviously it is your turnover no doubt that it is your turnover because it is your outward supply you are not paying tax your recipient will pay tax under rcm but 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 if it is your turnover, will it be included in exempt turnover? Technically, it is not exempt, but for the purpose of 42, 43, it is included in exempt turnover. Why? I am not going to pay tax. So, technically, if I am making an outward supply to you and it is taxable under RCM, you are going to pay tax. So, it is not your uh, turnover, it is my turnover. It is very clear, it is my turnover. Now, is it my exempt uh, value of exempt supplies? Yes, for the purpose of 42, 43, it is value of exempt supplies. Why? I am not, for me, it is as good as exempt. Though technically it is not, uh, not exempt, for me it is as good, as good as exempt because I am not going to pay tax. And next, transaction and securities. Securities is neither goods nor services, but for the purpose of 42 and 43, value of exempt supplies will include transaction and securities, not the entire value, only one percentage of sale value of securities. So if I am selling say 1 crore, value of exempt supplies uh, will include, will include only one percentage of sale value of security so it will not be one crore it will be taken as uh, only one lakh so if I, my sale in securities is one crore 
value of exempt supplies will not be 1 crore it will be 1 crore multiplied by 1 percentage which is 1 lakh land and building again it is not at all supply but for the purpose of sale of land and building is not as a, not at all supply schedule 3 but for the purposes of 42 43 it will be included in value of exempt supplies what value stamp duty value stamp duty value it will not include any other schedule 3 only this particular value of land and building will be included these are all specific inclusions why they are not technically exempt but for the purpose of 42 43 treat them as exempt add it in exempt value of exempt supplies increase the numerator so that addition uh, reversal of itc for 42 or addition to output tax liability for 43 is more now, what are the specific exclusions specific exclusions are you are talking about uh, taxes which was even excluded from your uh, turnover state central excise duty state excise duty vat and cst though they are actually included in uh, turnover but for the purpose of 42 43 these taxes will be removed central excise duty state excise duty vat and cst interest and discount other than for other than banks for banks interest and discount is actually technically exempt for banks it is technically exempt even for the purpose of 42 43 it is, it is stated as exempt so that reversal can be done for banks but for others though technically interest uh, income on loans and deposits uh, technically it is exempt but it will not be taken as exempt supplies why they don't want reversal now why they have said for other than banks for banks interest income is one of the major income which requires uh, reversal so for banks interest income is technically exempt and it will be included in the value of exempt supplies also no change for other than banks for normal companies where interest income is side income small income side income technically it is exempt but it will not be included in value of exempt supplies next you are talking about transportation of goods by vessel from india to outside india technically it is exempt when you are transporting goods from vessel from india to outside india technically it is exempt but they don't want reversal how to not do reversal they tell that it don't include in value of exempt supplies so technically when the goods are being transported in vessel from india to outside india technically there's an exemption but they don't want reversal how they enable that the, how they do this they tell that technically it is exempt but will not be will not be including in including in value of exempt supplies right now if you see the left hand side specific inclusions technically they were not exempt three cases they were not exempt but included in value of exempt supplies your outward supply under rcm technically not exempt but included uh, security is technically not exempt technically not good services but included in value of exempt supplies only one percentage sale of land building technically it is not at all supply but included in value of exempt supplies stamp duty value right likewise three are the cases where you remove from the value of uh, exempt supplies you don't include central excise duty state excise duty vat cst interest income for banks technically it is exempt include in value of exempt supplies for, for other than banks it is a small income technically though it is exempt but don't include in value of exempt supplies which means that no need of reversal and likewise when you talk about transportation of goods in a vessel from india to outside india technically it is exempt but they don't want reversal for the shipping companies so it is not included in value of exempt supplies that is all about your this is common for both 42 and 43 what will be there in value of exempt supplies and what will be there in turnover and state now friends as discussed initially for banks that is banking sector banking company financial institutions non-banking financial companies uh, they have one more option of going for simple reversal instead of complicated rule 42 and complicated rule 43 they can go for a simple option called as rule 38 so when you talk about banking companies uh, financial institution and non-banking financial companies uh, they can opt for 42 43 for reversal obviously banks will have reversal common reversal why banks major income is interest income which is exempt other income processing charges documentation charges net charges rtg charges are the small small charges they are all taxable so banks will always have proportional idc either they can opt for 42 43 or they can think of rule 38 rule 38 is very simple for them very simple calculation when it is rule 38 it is for not only for inputs and input services but also for capital goods 42 43 is 42 is separately for inputs and input services and 43 is for capital goods but if banks goes for rule 38 no differentiation now it is for everything for inputs input services as well as for capital goods right so banks what they can do option one go for a regular scheme 42 43 option two go for a very simple rule that is rule 38 how how it is very simple it is simplest to the core how if it is block category if there are certain credits which is under block category or non-business purposes you cannot get credit even 
in 42, 43, here also there is no credit, zero credit. But if at all you are talking about, if at all you are talking about branch to branch transfer, one, one branch of a bank giving the services to another branch of a same bank, then you can take 100 percentage credit. So you divide this entire credit of banks into three for rule 38. How? Blocked, no credit. Branch to branch, distinct persons. One branch of the bank to another branch of the same bank, distinct persons. Get full credit if that is your inward supplies. And balance portion, balance portion, balance portion, third B, get 50 percentage credit. A very, 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 very simple calculation. Let us see one example of this rule 38. If at all there is an inward supply where it is blocked or non-business purposes, 2000 is the GST portion. If it is blocked or non-business purposes, no credit, no credit, zero rupees credit. If it is branch to branch, there is distinct person, branch to branch, then it is full credit, 100 percentage. Taxes, 1000 on inward supply, you can take 100 percentage credit. Balance. When you are talking about balance, you are talking about other input services, inputs, input services and capital goods. Balance, 3 Bs, blocked, 0 percentage, branch to branch, 100 percentage, balance, 50 percentage. If the GST on the balance is 7000, you can get 50 percentage, 3500. That is total is 4500 credit you can get. And one important point that you have to remember is, once you opt, you have to opt once in a year. So once you go for rule 38, once option, once exercise cannot be withdrawn for the remaining of the financial year. If banks are deciding to go for rule 38, in between they cannot go back to 42, 43. If they have decided that they want to go for rule 38, till the year end they have to be under rule 38. They cannot, they cannot go back to 42, 43. Next year they can again, excuse me, go back to 42, 43. So that they can do. That is all about special uh, rule for proportion IDC for banks. Either they can go for normal 42, 43 or they can go for special rule 38. Very simple. Three Bs. Blocked, branch to branch and balance. Blocked, 0 percentage. Branch to branch, 100 percentage. Balance, 50 percentage. For all the three categories, inputs, input services as well as uh, capital goods. That's all about your proportionate ITC.